What's up everybody, Tyler Edgers here. It's time for a Norns development setup update for 2023. My tooling and stack has changed significantly since the last video I did. Uh, instead of using Ethernet and SSHFS, I'm using SMB and Wi-Fi. Instead of using Sublime, I'm using VS Code. Um, this setup is much simpler and um, I find a lot more resilient and it pretty much matches exactly what, you know, official Monome documentation uh, recommends too. So hopefully uh, this will make development more comfortable and accessible for y'all. Um, one of my guiding here sticks with development is just being comfortable and feeling, uh, feeling like a calm sense of, I know where things are, I know how to get from point A to point B, I know how things work together, and this setup has been doing that for me really well. Um, so first step, we are going to connect to SMB, um, and we can see all these instructions here. Uh, I'll drop a link in um, in the description below. But basically, um, we're going to open up this connect to server window and um, connect via SMB. So pop open Finder, uh, Command K. Um, I've already got this set up, but I'm just going to remove this and add it again so you can see what that looks like um, from potentially zero. Uh, so you should get this little window after you hit Command K. Uh, you can copy and paste this in. Just hit Connect. Uh, my Norns is already on, of course, and it's already connected to Wi-Fi. Um, you know, as we can see, I'm on the same network. Uh, I'm just using the same little Wi-Fi nubbin, just the stock one that comes with Norns, um, and both my computer and the Norns are on the same network. Uh, instructions for how to do that are above, but we're skipping over that for this video. So now that we're connected, um, we can browse Norns just like it's an external hard drive or a flash drive. So it shows up underneath locations on the side of Finder. We have dust, code, audio, data, um, this is pretty much exclusively how I access uh, data on Norns nowadays. So then, uh, now that we're connected, um, let's go over to VS Code. So VS Code is um, a Microsoft product, uh, Visual Studio Code. You can download it for free. Um, here. Uh, it's a really pleasant IDE. Uh, IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. It has all the tools you need to develop. Um, this is both Mac and Windows. Um, so go ahead and download this and install it. But a couple of reasons I like this is it's it starts fast, it's really stable, um, everything is integrated. So you have um, your text editor, as well as your terminal, everything's just kind of connected. So typically, uh, the way I would work is um, create a new window. This is another project I was working on. Um, my flow is something like this. Uh, now that we're connected to SMB, we can just open a folder. Um, and I just open um, typically code, but sometimes dust itself. Um, depends on what I'm doing, but here we now just have a window into all of our um, audio code data directories, and then all your scripts are in code, of course. But this mirrors um, what we see when we just browse in Finder. So it's just a very natural, comfortable way to work. Um, doesn't take a lot of thought to understand where you are, what you're looking at. Um, and it's nice because you can add files directly here. So if we wanted to make a new script, um, you can just create a new folder. Uh, we'll call this, you know, call it foo. Uh, we can make a new file. And then, um, if I remember Lua syntax.
we save this. Uh, this is just right here. Um, you know, it's already it's already there. There's no uh, no extra steps. There's no transferring. Um, I know some people work via SFTP and they're transferring files over. Um, here, it's, it just feels like editing a file on your on your local computer. Um, so then often I'll have, uh, pr pretty much the only way I interact with um, Matron slash Maiden is via SSH. So this is where things get a little, a little more technical, I suppose. Um, so I'll often have uh, a terminal open and I'll be SSH'd into NORNS. Uh, SSH stands for Secure Shell. I always use SSH keys instead of um, username and password. Uh, same with GitHub too. And I'll share a link about that um, in the next section. But uh, So from the terminal, you can type maiden hyphen REPL and it will open uh, the REPL that you're probably used to using um, here. So this, this part of maiden is the same thing as this right here. Uh, if we rerun this script, we should see our little hello world appear. Yeah, there it is. So. I find this the most comfortable way to work, um, simply because it's all in one place, it's consolidated, and uh, makes for a really nice development experience. Um, so I mentioned uh, SSH keys. How did this you know, kind of magic SSH norns command uh, work? What's, what's going on there? Um, we are working with our SSH config file to get this to get this happening. Um, so if you open up, um, well, th there's a few layers to this. Um, I guess the, the one that matters right now is if you go to your home directory, um, you should have a SSH config file. And inside this, um, if you drop in something like this that shows host norns, host name, norns.local, user use keychain, and specify an identity file. You can type SSH norns and uh, you just get logged in. So I'll put some more detailed descriptions below. Um, doesn't lend itself very well to talking about. There's a lot of commands you have to do to make it happen, but essentially the way it's set up is I can just type SSH norns from any terminal and um, and I'm in. Um, sometimes I'll actually have a separate terminal window open and I'll do a split screen kind of like this if I need more space for something. So if I'm working on, you know, if I need like multiple code windows open, um, VS Code has a nice feature where you can do split screen stuff so you can be editing two files or three files at once. Uh, this just makes it, again, Com comfortable and ergonomic. Um, you know, in some scripts that I work on, there's a lot that needs to happen over on over on this side, either, you know, analyzing tables or looking at functions or debugging things. And I just like to have the extra real estate when I work. Um, so that's really VS Code. Uh, you know, finally, kind of the last key to the puzzle is um, using uh, SSH keys with GitHub. Um, so I'll drop a link to this as well, but highly, highly recommend this if you don't do this already. Um, so adding a, I, I, think of, I think of my norns as very unstable. I think of it as um, I could potentially break something or uh, brick it or something like that because I tend to do some risky slash experimental stuff with the norns. So because of that, I want to make sure that my code is always saved and backed up. So instead of saving and backing it up locally, I 
do it all to GitHub, and most of my scripts are just totally open source from day one in public, even if they're really rough. Um, and that just gives me peace of mind to work with freedom and confidence that uh, I'm not going to lose any of my work on my Norns. I can, at any given time, I can just nuke it and start from scratch, and I'll feel safe with that. So part of getting that workflow to be comfortable is not entering your password every time you need to push code up to GitHub. Um, and with GitHub, you know, when you make a new repository, um, I'll just call this foo. You're given these instructions. Um, and these work with uh, kind of old school um, username password authentication as well as SSH, but the difference is just the how pleasant the experience is. So with SSH, you're never asked for a username and password. It just works. And because we're connected via SMB, we can initialize our, our repository on Norns itself, commit code there, push it, and then it's all just it's all just integrated. There's no extra steps. So to see what this would look like, um, we're creating a new repository. We haven't made one yet. So uh, we'll go back here. We are going to close that, open our terminal. So I actually don't want to be SSH into norms anymore. Um, I just exited. I'm just I'm just logged into my computer now. Um, so then we want to navigate to norns via command line from Mac OS. And Mac OS mounts external drives at volumes. So if we go CD slash volumes. Uh, we can see Macintosh HD, which is where the operating system and all my files are, and then Dust, which is Norns. So now we're browsing Dust from Mac OS, which means that all of our SSH keys that are loaded into Mac OS are available here as well. So we're going to jump into code. Uh, we're going to go into foo. So git init, this is going to initialize a new repository. Bit of a lag here, it's kind of interesting. Um, and then we are going to add this. We just added our file, um, git remote add origin, git at github.com, tylerredders.foo.git. So this is saying link this repository on Norns to the repository on GitHub here. We're naming it origin. And then we can, we can push the code up. And you'll see in this whole process, um, I never entered a username and password anywhere. It just it just magically worked. Uh, if we refresh this page, we'll see our foo file with the hello world in it. And we're, we're ready to go. We're, we're already set up to share our work, to ask for help, to um, you know review it. Uh, one of my favorite use cases is like, if I'm doing a bunch of work, um, and then I'm off running errands or off an adventure somewhere, I know I can always just open GitHub on whatever device I'm on and review the code um, in its current state if I've got ideas or something. So just this idea of using, of always keeping GitHub up to date helps with um, just the development process overall. There's a lot of times that I develop and I don't even have an IDE open. I'm just reviewing code that I've written and I like just setting all this up at the beginning because then you don't have to set it up later and it's all just ready to go and it's really consistent. Um, but the, the key to all this is using an SSH key and uh, the, the GitHub instructions will walk you through how to do this. Um, I'm not gonna do it here, but uh, you essentially, you generate a key, you save it to your computer and then you add that to GitHub and then that's what GitHub uses to know you are who you say you are. 
Um, just a couple steps to do it. Um, highly recommend spending the time to to get this set up. I will, I will never not use an SSH key with GitHub. And what else? Um, I think it's probably worth noting that. Development is, it's, it's an additive process. It is, a, it, is a, it is a process of many small decisions and Kaizen and gardening. Um, I was really happy with my development setup, you know, from February 2017 when I made this last video. Um, took a lot of work and energy to assemble the tool chain that I presented here. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it, but time went on and I, you know, changed some of my preferences and changed some of the things I was trying to do and um, adapted. So never feel, never feel bad about, you know, putting time into something, learning it, and then changing your mind later. Um, I found this development setup is much more comfortable and uh, just simple, simpler. There's less moving parts. There's less things that can go wrong. And I have more fun um, developing on Norns because of it. So I think that's about all I wanted to cover. Um, I mean, from there, we just you know initialized our new repository. We made a new script. It's connected to GitHub. Uh, it only took a few minutes to do all of that. And that's really all, all it should take. It should be s starting, starting up your computer and starting up Norns and getting connected shouldn't be a barrier. That should be something you don't even think about. And you can just sit down and get doing the fun stuff. Um, so from here, I mean, my, my next steps would be to iterate on this. Once I'm happy with it, I would commit the changes and push it up. And that's really all there is to it. Um, the, the last thing I'll say is I have other resources available for making it even easier to start. Um, and that mainly is what I call the Nornslier plate, um, which I'll drop a link to. It is, where is that? Nornsler plate. Um, this is a pun on boilerplate, which is a uh, development industry term saying boilerplate is kind of your starting baseline state for something. Um, so this script is typically where I start. Uh, I copy and paste the contents of this file um, into my script. And this is going to have um, just like a lot of the basics that you're always going to want. So an init function, um, some basic messaging, uh, bindings for the encoders and keys and a simple um, redraw function that's going to give you basic graphics. So yeah, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you learned something. Um, if there's any questions, I'm probably going to have the comments on this video disabled too just because I find that um, Comments on videos like these tend to get stale and can actually cause more harm than good. You know, like today I'm recording from uh, a Ventura 13.0.1 computer and Norns 2201.29, which I think both of those are already outdated as of writing this. So. A lot of the problems that might come up are typically very um, temporal or ephemeral based on whatever the digital weather is of, uh, of today. So uh, message me on other channels and I'll be happy to help out. But thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time.